Today we are going to see how to uh, build the bond graph model of this mechanical system that you see on the screen. And the question here is, is there a specific procedure that we can apply in such a way that we generate the bond graph model in an easy way and we don't make mistakes? So that's the idea here. So I am going to write down in here the what I would call steps to build a mechanical system model. And so we're gonna first step number one. Step number one is going to be to uh, use a one junction to represent each distinct angular velocity, in this case, angular velocity. Well, each distinct angular velocity. So the first thing we gotta do is to recognize what velocities we have, but also, let me disappear from here so we have more space and you look at more interesting things than me. Uh, in here you have this, uh, you have the, um, let's look, you see this is one angular velocity, okay? This is another angular velocity here. So what I'm gonna do is to use a one junction and I'm gonna draw it right on the, on the graph right here. You see, and put the one junction, so this is omega one, or theta, theta one dot. You, since you have it in there, I'll just write it like this. This would be omega two, which is theta two dot like that. And then I am going to say, this is a velocity you know, this would be um, the, let's call it theta dot of the wall equals to zero. And just so that we have a good reference here, um, theta dot of the wall equals zero here. But it is a velocity and it's our reference. And then on the second step that I am going to do, uh, step number two, you're gonna say, okay, uh, we are going to, uh, let me say, attach to the one junctions elements that experience those velocities. Okay, very good. So maybe I move this a little. I don't know, here we go. We're fine. Right there, okay. So, in here, on the right hand side, it's very obvious that, that we have this uh, source of flow. Source of flow with um, velocity theta dot of the wall equals to zero. And I think I'm gonna need some space for my steps. So I'm gonna move them up a little bit. And then on the one junctions here, we have this one that represents the I element, which is the, uh, the mass, um, the inertia element in here with value 
this would be um, j sub 2 we have over here the inertia element with value j sub 1 and so those are the inertias that we see now over here you have the in between these two you you have a relative velocity because you know it's got to be the velocity of this minus this and in between this one too so you you have to uh, think about that in here you have this element see the difference between these two velocities this one see the difference between this and the wall this one see the difference between this and the wall also so the next step is going to be um, step number three in here like, uh, over here we're going to say use zero junctions to represent the velocity difference okay and then I'm going to say, well, I'm going to do each step by step, one at a time. So that way we'll, we'll have this. Uh, so right here, I'm going to, to put the zero right there. That signifies this velocity minus this one is going to be uh, represented uh, with this junction here would be theta sub 2 dot minus theta of the wall dot like this this other one on the on the uh, on on this on the side on the right here you're gonna have the zero like this and it will go this one which would be um, theta one dot minus theta sub two dot and in between right here on this we also have another zero here because this is zero velocity it makes sense to draw it like this see and then this would be a one which be theta sub one dot my one dot minus theta of the wall okay so those are the velocity differences our last step our fourth step is going to be to attach attach to the zero junctions the elements that experience those velocity differences very good so you see in here we are going to see the um, this is uh, you have the C element in here and you have this R element over here. This R with value um, whatever it is, uh, P sub 2. This with value 1 over K sub 2. And then on this one too, is you see you have the damping on the spring. So you have the C element and then you have the R element. This with value um, um, B sub 1 um, and then this with value 1 over K sub 1 and then over here you see we also have this ones and that is you have a C element with value uh, 1 over K sub 0 like this and this other one which would be an R element with value uh, V sub zero. And lo and behold, what happens is that 
we have been able to draw the entire block, uh, the entire bronze graph. Uh, I am missing something here. Sorry, I, I missed. I, I should have was, uh, put in here a source of flow with below, uh, theta of the wall equals to zero. That I missed a little mistake in there. But I'm completing it now. So um, this bond graph model is good enough to put it into the CAMG software. And I drew the bond graph model on top of the actual system so that you can see the one-to-one -one correspondence of the graph to the model itself. Okay, it's very obvious that in here you could simplify things and you can simplify things over here too because you could you could say um, okay uh, I know that uh, when you have a, a bond like like you you see here this one like this this is equal to this and the same thing when you have this this would be like that because the effort and the flows are the same on both sides of the junction so it's not a problem so in here you uh, I would do just one last step which you would be to assign the causal marks a number the bonds to have it complete the this last step cam G will do it for you so if you put the, uh, this model into CAMG, CAMG will go and number the bonds and put that uh, into the, uh, will put the causal marks in here. I think um, that last step, although it's not necessary to put in this into CAMG, I am going to do it just for completeness to make sure that we, we have everything and my objective has been here to show you how you uh, you can ob you can obtain the model very quickly. So for assigning ca the causal marks, I think there is also a procedure that I believe would be worth uh, writing here. I'm going to say steps to assign the causal marks. Okay, and step number one is going to be assign the sources first. Assign uh, the marks to the sources. Okay. So there is no source of efforts? Efforts or flows. Say S E or S F. And C, uh, you can say and. See if uh, the causality uh, mm, uh, see if the causality uh, fits uh, assignment in, in, in on the junctions, and see if the causality uh, propagates. Then you will see it in a moment what that means. Number two would be to assign um, the eyes in integral form at the one junctions remember the one junctions are in are the common velocity junctions so I would go based on what I said the first thing is I assign this it's going to be like this, right? Because it's a source of flow. This one is also like that. I go to the I in integral form. That makes this two like this. Because the junction can take only one flow. You see, if the junction can take only one flow, then the others have to be this way. And you see in here, I put it there mark to this one then this flow sets it for this one the others have to be like this 
like this, see? Okay. And uh, we have to see if causality propagates. That means in here you see this flow. That makes this one like this. And now you have this and you have this. Forces the zero to be like this because the zero needs a, a one. So you assign the uh, I is in integral form and at the one junctions and propagates the assignment, I would say, so that we uh, complete our statement here. You could say and propagate the assignment. I mean, you would say according to the what is required on each junction. So in here, you have these two are flowing, and then this obviously will have to be like this. But the moment you do that, you 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 force these two to be like this. And the same thing is true here. See, the flow in here makes these other two like that. And then in here you you have the flows on this two forces this to be like this. This flowing here forces this two to be like that. And you have basically finished. Okay? But in this particular case is because the the causality propagated in here. Um, but to for completeness, you say assign this the zeros the c's in integral form at the zero junctions and propagate the causal marks assignment I think this way um, you 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 have to see at each step if it is complete now the model that we have in here is totally complete uh, um, perhaps the last thing that we might want to do is uh, you know do a little simplification over here and the uh, simplification over here but I personally feel that it's not necessarily and perhaps it's even more clear the way it is right now because it cle you clearly can see the reference points and also how the velocities and how the forces add in the whole system and well in this case the torques yeah, because it is a rotational system. So that's how we generate the bone graph model for the me a mechanical system with systematic steps.